The movie begins with the ground shaking violently. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant gets hit by a massive earthquake of 9.1 and maximum seismic intensity of 7 on March 11, 2011. Due to that, workers get thrown off their feet, and equipment topples over, which causes chaos to ensue as workers scramble to secure the reactors and prevent any further damage. Because of the earthquake's intensity, objects are moving, and workers struggle to maintain balance. Later, Masao Yoshida, the plant's chief supervisor, arrives at the control room and takes over the situation. 54 minutes after the earthquake, units 1 and 2 noticed they had lost all power in the plant. So Toshio Izaki, operations management shift supervisor, called their headquarters. Upon hearing that, Yoshida declares a station blackout and a nuclear emergency. Yoshida immediately communicates with other plant managers and government officials, trying to get a handle on the situation. Then, he gives orders to his team, who work together to minimize the effects of the earthquake. Just as the workers are beginning to recover from the earthquake, a massive tsunami hits the plant. A worker immediately announces to evacuate the workers near the shore and rings their alarms. On the other hand, the workers in the control room also receive notification about the tsunami, which was more significant than what they expected. It crashes the plant, with water flooding the area, causing widespread destruction and rising radiation levels, triggering a nuclear emergency. The tsunami knocked out the backup generators needed to cool the reactors. Yoshida and his team quickly assess the damage and work to stabilize the reactors to prevent a nuclear meltdown. Meanwhile, Izaki tells his team they must check the reactors despite being dangerous. According to him, if they're unsuccessful in restoring the power, the water in the reactor will dry up and overheat. Then if the fuel melts, it will break out of the container vessel, and radiation will discharge, causing them to get exposed. After that, they start planning how to maintain water in the reactor. Later, the President of the United States gets informed by the US Embassy in Japan about the massive earthquake and that the nuclear power plant was in critical condition. He also learns that the Japanese government doesn't know how to deal with the situation, so they want the Japanese to consider their responses for American citizens' safety. Two hours 33 minutes after the earthquake, the workers check the reactors and find out it has already discharged radiation, so Izaki informs Yoshida about it. A press conference was held at the PM's office nearly five hours after the earthquake. They announced the nuclear emergency declared at the power plant. Under regulations, a state of emergency gets declared. Meanwhile, Yoshida is meeting with the National Security Agency and gets annoyed because they can't land on a decision as the workers are risking their lives. Suddenly, one worker in the control room announces that the generators have arrived. However, he gets informed that the voltage is high, making them need high voltage generators. Still, instead, they sent them low voltage ones. As the situation at the plant reaches a critical point, the government sends in a team of experts from Tokyo Electric Power Company to control the situation. However, the workers refuse to abandon their posts, insisting that they're the only ones who understand the complex machinery and systems of the plant. Outside, they try to power up the engine. Unfortunately, the pressure rises more than expected, so they must make a difficult decision. They must vent the pressure building up inside the reactors, releasing a massive amount of radioactive material into the atmosphere, which is necessary to prevent a complete meltdown. After Yoshida gives the signal to vent, the workers inside the plant gear up and immediately execute it. After the pair returns, they send another pair despite knowing the radiation has risen high fast. Unfortunately, they couldn't reach the reactor as the radiation was too high. Izaki then orders the team to the seismic isolation because they have gotten too exposed to the radiation. Later, Takumi Maeda returns and volunteers to get inside with his new plan to reach the reactor. So Izaki immediately orders to gear him and his pair up and let them go in. During that time, Izaki received information from Yoshida that the venting was successful, but they sent the radiation outside. Upon knowing this, he gets mad at Yoshida, who's also annoyed at the situation. A few moments later, one of the workers says there's no point in them staying there because they can't do anything about the situation. Because of that, a commotion occurs among the workers who want to stay and protect the reactor. Izaki stops them and tells them that, just like all of them, he wants to go home too, however, they're uncertain about what will happen. Unit 1 blows up the next day, causing much damage and casualties. With that, the power cable gets damaged, so they have to start again. Inside the plant, the group works tirelessly to stabilize the reactors and contain the radiation leaks, facing equipment failures, flooding, and dangerous radiation levels. They communicate through handheld radios and wear heavy protective gear to minimize radiation exposure. Later, Yoshida and Izaki visit the control room to assess the situation. However, they get confronted with the difficult decision of whether to pump seawater into the reactors to cool them down, 
which may prevent a catastrophic meltdown but will cause irreversible damage to them. Yoshida weighs the risks and makes the difficult decision to order his team to pump seawater into the reactors. The media coverage of the disaster intensifies, with journalists flocking to the plant site to report on the situation. Meanwhile, Reiko Abe, a TV journalist reporting on the tragedy, interviews officials and workers. She's trying to get to the heart of the crisis, asking questions and pushing for answers. At the same time, the workers and officials struggle to provide for them. She continues to report the situation, highlighting the heroism and sacrifice of the workers who stayed behind to prevent a nuclear disaster. She also interviews family members of the Fukushima 50 who are waiting outside the plant, giving the audience a glimpse into the personal toll of the disaster. On the other hand, the Americans learn that the Japanese provided an evacuation center 12 miles from the plant. So, during their meeting, they wanted to order the United States citizens to evacuate 50 to 80 miles from the power plant. As time passed, Fukushima 50's health deteriorated due to exposure to high radiation levels, and some began to fall ill. However, they continue to work driven by their sense of duty and responsibility to prevent a nuclear disaster. 49 hours after the earthquake, Yoshida calls Izaki telling him that the radiation in Unit 3 is rising fast and might explode any minute. He wants him to abort all outside missions and everyone except those collecting data, who will come and take turns in the control room. Then, he tells him to come back to and report to him. However, Izaki tells him that he knows that he can't leave. Still, he insists that he's the one who can explain the situation better than anyone else. He has no choice but to follow because it's an order. After their conversation, he tells his men that they will rotate with five men at a time, and the rest will wait for their turns in the control room. When they return to the seismic isolation building, the workers commend their excellent work, clean them up, and check them for their radiation exposure levels. Unfortunately, the second they get to the control room, the NSA commands them to return. Because of that, Yoshida gets pissed as Unit 3 might explode any minute, risking the lives of many workers. However, he has no choice but to tell them to do so. When they're about to get inside, Unit 3 explodes. Yoshida immediately calls the headquarters to report it, and they receive news that they're missing 40 workers after the explosion. They immediately ask about the situation of the five workers after the explosion, and the workers tell them not to send anyone there at the moment. However, Izaki tells them he will return as he's in charge. Despite Yoshida trying to stop him, Izaki walks straight, telling him he can't wait. Four other men follow him, wear their masks and ride the vehicle. Not long after, Yoshida receives information that there are multiple injuries due to the explosion. Still, all are now stable, and she reports no deaths, which relieves him. Meanwhile, the media and some government officials criticize the workers' efforts. On the other hand, Reiko continues to report on the situation and the Fukushima 50's heroism and dedication. She interviews members of the public affected by the disaster, including those who have evacuated from their homes. The Japanese government and the media became aware of the scale of the disaster and began to mobilize their response. Later, they order all non-essential personnel to evacuate the plant, leaving only a small group of 50 workers to continue the fight to save the plant from a total meltdown. The Fukushima 50 group includes Yoshida, Izaki, and several other workers. Despite being aware of the risks they're taking, they remain committed to their duty. They're determined to prevent a nuclear disaster. Later, they hear another explosion and command Izaki to check the parameters. Then, they discover that the pressure at the suppression chamber at Unit 2 is at zero. Because of that, Yoshida announced that anyone who wasn't essential personnel should leave, and then the crew leader should choose who would stay. Then, he bows and thanks everyone for what they have done with their fight. On the other hand, the young workers tell Izaki they will stay and see the situation as it will also be what Izaki would do. But Izaki tells them they're still young and orders them to leave. Still, the four men insist on staying. When the lady worker approaches them, she tells them they're still young and that the country will need them in the future. So, with a heavy heart, they have no choice but to go. After that, each worker left in the control room tries to remember their family and sends them messages about their situation. Meanwhile, Izaki also receives a message from his daughter. Then, he goes outside and munches his food alone, crying. Not long after, the workers face equipment failures and flooding, threatening to escalate the situation. A worker named Kazuo Agawa volunteers to enter a contaminated area to repair a critical valve, risking his life. On the other hand, Yoshida and Izaki abandon one of the reactors, which has suffered irreparable damage, to focus on saving the others. Later, the Fukushima 50 continue to work tirelessly, with their families anxiously awaiting news of their safety in the evacuation center outside the plant. In the meantime, the workers continue working hard and being ready for anything as the pressure at Unit 2 is still high. Later, 
the government dumps water from a helicopter to stabilize the pressure. Despite their doubts about the plan, they successfully put Unit 2 to stability. On the other hand, at the Yokota Air Base 374th Airlift Wing, the American soldiers are responding to Japan's situation. According to their commander, when the United States was in need, Japan came to help them, so now was the time to return the favor to the Japanese people. Later, the workers go to the evacuation center to meet their families. Izaki meets his daughter and apologizes for making her worry. Then, her daughter leads him to his wife, who tells him the situation scared them. Then, one of the residents announces that he has returned. Izaki begs everyone for their forgiveness as they failed to save their hometown. However, the residents commend the workers for protecting them until the end. They then all thank him for his hard work. Soon, he sees his father, who cries joyfully upon seeing him. Later, the American armies arrive at the evacuation center to provide relief goods for the residents. When Izaki comes across one American, he thanks him for their service. The movie ends with a memorial service for the workers who died in the disaster. It serves as a reminder of the courage and sacrifice of the Fukushima 50, who risked everything to prevent a nuclear catastrophe. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.